Okay, welcome everyone to my what is serious this time, what is diagonalization? So what I'm trying to explain today is um, what is actually the idea behind diagonalizing a matrix? And I, I kind of want to uh, convince you that it's basically about finding the right coordinate system. So let's just jump right into it. So the point is, well, a diagonal matrix has its eigenvectors forming the kind of the standard, the standard coordinate system that you're used to, well, let's say in R, R2 in this example. So what does this mean? Well, we have this matrix here. Um, and you can see the two, well, there are two eigenvectors, namely one zero and zero minus one. And you can see them here because they form exactly, uh, well, um, zero one or zero minus one doesn't matter. They form exactly the the coordinate axis here. So here, this vector is definitely an eigenvector of this matrix. So this picture is the action of the matrix on R two. Um, and this is what this matrix is actually doing. And you can see clearly that you here have uh, uh, an axis with eigenvalue one. And it's eigenvalue one again, because everything kind of points in the direction you think it should point, like increasing in this direction, decreasing in this direction. You have another axis here, which is this one. And it's obviously an axis, right? It's completely fixed by the action of the matrix. And it points in the opposite direction as you should ex expect it because you have eigenvalue minus one. And so this is a minus one eigenvalue. And uh, this is the one eigenvalue. So for a diagonal matrix, a diagonal matrix is nothing else than the matrix. Well, let's say you, you don't have any zero eigenvalues and the diagonal matrix is nothing else than a matrix where the eigenvectors are actually axes of your, um, of your of, well, visibly axes of your, of your matrix. Uh, for uh, let's say a, a random matrix, a random two by two matrix, of course it's not random, I've chosen it, but you know, something that comes up in the wild, something like this. Well, you can kind of see the eigenvectors. Uh, so here's an eigenvector pointing here, along, along this line, going all the way here. And here's another one. So along this line, here's an eigenvector up, so those are the things that kind of stay stay fixed under this. Again, this picture is the action of the matrix on R2. And of course, those axes stay fixed, as you can see. But they are not in standard form. And that's why this matrix is not diagonal. It has two axes, but you kind of need to do something to them until they, they look like the standard axis of, of R2. Here, they're just really just standard axis. Maybe with an inverted scalar because, or, or maybe something stretched, but we don't care about that. We are linear algebra anyway, so everything is just well defined up to scalars in some sense anyway. So I don't, I don't, I'm not worried about that. I'm more worried about that those two axes are not in standard position. The question is given a matrix in the wild like this one, can you find axes that? Uh, uh, can, can you find kind of kind of rotation is scaling or whatever such that um, the matrix is actually uh, uh, such that the eigenvectors actually become axes, right? So the x y axes are eigenvectors. That's oh maybe I should use the other color. The x y matrices are eigenvectors, and in contrast, the x y matrices are not eigenvectors. Okay. Does this actually work? Why does it make sense? Well, because everything kind of in, in our standard coordinate system matrices tend to look nice. That's kind of like, um, okay, let's try to do this. I, I just take this matrix. So I, again, I'm starting with the, my blue matrix here and I, I kind of want to make it nice. So here's my blue matrix. And well, those are the, the two eigenvectors, a half and minus one. 
So this is my a half and minus one, the red one. Uh, this was a red one from before, and the other one was goes a little bit in this direction. That's a blue one, and that's uh, uh, sorry, the other, exactly the other way around. So this is a red one, and this is a blue one. It goes a half and minus one, a half and minus one, one and a half. Okay. And then on in standard form. And what I do is something very easy. I just put my first eigenvector in, in a row of a matrix, and I put my second eigenvector in a row of a matrix, and I call the matrix P. And what I'm interested in, let's say this matrix is M. Then what I'm interested in, what is actually P inverse times M times P. Right? So M is my starting matrix. I take the eigenvectors of my starting matrix, I put them in a row of a certain other matrix, and I ask, what is this? What is this thing? Well, let me explain this, why this makes geometrically sense in this example. I just take the same matrix as before, P of A, but I throw in some parameter which I want to think of, of, of parameters that changes through time. So let's see. So P of one is where I wanted to end up by because P of one, what is it? P of one, let's, let's have a look at it. Uh, this term dies, it's a half minus one, a half one. So P of one is actually P itself. Right, and p of zero. Let's let's have a look at it. P of zero. Well, p of zero is built such as this that entity matrix. Right. I, I kind of want to convince you that this is a good definition by seeing everything in action. So p of one is um, this rotation-like thing action on on R two again. And p of two thirds. So this is this is what happens after after two thirds. P of two thirds is is almost where we want to be, right? So here you have an axis. It's almost perfect, and here you have an axis. Very good. And you just have to turn it a little bit more, right, to get in place, but. What I want to do is I want to convince you that kind of this matrix kind of continuously does it. And I'm doing this by showing you um, a little video what this matrix is doing if you vary A. And here you can see it. So if I vary A, so here I start with the original picture. I make A bigger until it goes to one. So I start from zero to one. And you can see it, it really just rotates the original picture in place. It just rotates the original picture in place. So that's what this matrix actually, actually is doing. Very good. So that's why, why I kind of think of like a, a, the diagonal matrix. And this, um, if you do this calculation, well, you can already see that this matrix actually is the matrix. Uh, let's call this, let's call this one n, n from before. So this is diagonal and you can see it in the picture because um, for A equals one, this will just be the, the, the two eigenvalues, eigenvectors will be exactly those axes. Okay. Um, so basically diagonalization of a matrix is to look at the action of the matrix on your whatever space and see where the eigenvectors are. The eigenvectors should form kind of like a coordinate system and you rotate and scale it in place. That, that's basically what's going on. And the way to do this is, um, it, it might work, it might not work. I show you in, uh, in a second an example where it doesn't work, but in almost all cases it will work. And the way to do it is you just need to calculate first the characteristic polynomial. And, and basically you, you, you calculate the roots of those polynomials, which are the eigenvalues. And if you have n of them, we are in business, everything's fine. You find the corresponding n eigenvectors. Um, you put them in a row of a matrix called a P, and you do this calculation. Okay, so that's kind of the easy step. And this, will, when you ever you see a matrix in the wild, almost always this will this will be the case almost always. If no, it gets a bit more complicated, um, and you need to find those linear independent solutions. 
um, on, on eigenvectors, and then it depends whether you, you find enough of them to form a coordinate system. If yes, you can still coordinate, uh, you can still move everything into place. If no, then you need to do something different, which we, which we, you will see in the, uh, you can check the what is the Jordan normal form. Then you, go, you need to do something like a Jordan normal form. So not all matrices are actually diagonalizable. Okay, the, the, the formal definition is exactly what you think it is, a matrix or some field, I just showed you the real numbers, that's good enough. Uh, matrix or some field is diagonalizable if there exists some invertible matrix such that this is diagonal. And this happens if and only if there exists a basis given by the eigenvectors. And the natural question you should ask, okay, yeah, the natural question you should ask is, are all, uh, are all matrices diagonalizable? Well, the answer is yes and no at the same time. So basically, all matrices are diagonalizable. Let's say if you work on an algebraically closed field like C, you're, you're very, very happy and almost all matrices are diagonalizable. For example, this matrix, which again depends on A, is only not diagonalizable if A happens to be zero. And if you choose random A, then it's basically never zero, so it's always diagonalizable. And well, you could kind of see it in those pictures. So for A equals, for A small, it doesn't look like there are any axes at all, but this is just because I'm using the real picture here. So this is always a real picture. And in fact, this is not diagonalizable over the real numbers. The eigenvalues and the eigenvectors will be complex. You could see it in the picture. There's no way that there's any eigen. That there's, I, there is no eigenvector, right? You can't see anything. Um, for a bigger than zero, this is diagonalizable over over R. And yeah, you, I can see here an eigenvector in this direction, and clearly in this direction there's another eigenvector. So you kind of only need to rotate everything in place, and you're happy. And for A equals zero is kind of the case in between. There is certainly an eigenvector, but you only find one. And it's roughly going uh, um, along this axis here. But that's basically it. The rest, the rest rotates. And this, this is still in the picture over R. So over R, it's visibly clear that this can't be diagonalizable. Over C, the same thing will happen, um, which is not clear from the real picture, of course, but the same thing. Um, yeah, so the takeaway message is that we will see next time um, that all basically all matrices are diagonalizable and being diagonalizable means just that there is some arrangement of the eigenvectors that if you rotate and permute and scale and whatever those matrices do, uh, you move it into place and it gives you the standard coordinate axis of whatever, k, k to the n, r, r to the n. Thank you very much for your attention.